Hey kids, here we are again. What? We are ready to uh, go into the next lesson. So this is Thursday's lesson, and then you don't have any school on Friday, so you will have Fridays as well. So here's the warm-up. The warm-up is practicing fract uh, factoring that you did um, from the previous slide. And yes, there's a lot of homework. Shut up, kids. A lot of homework, but the more you practice, in factoring, the better you'll you'll be. Now, unfortunately, my camera seems to be having some issues. It won't hold a charge, so I don't know I'm, if I'm rushing through this. It's because I don't think my battery is going to last. Um, so anyway, factor completely. I want to make sure that you know that that means all factors are prime. So if you were to factor some cubic and get these two factors, you would get partial credit but not full credit because this is not prime. This is x minus 6 times x plus 6. And then your x plus 2. That would get you full credit. However, if you factored a cubic and you got these two factors, you would indeed be done. Why? Well, x plus 2 is prime, and so is this factor x squared plus 36. Remember, I gave you the definition of prime polynomials for this unit. Um, the C, this value here, has to be a rational number. So I recognize this, hopefully pretty quickly, as the difference of two perfect squares. I'm going to skip this one for a minute, because this is also the difference of two perfect squares, but not quite until you pull out the common factor of 3. So if you pull out 3, you get x squared minus 16, and then break down the x squared minus 16. Same thing here. This one does not look like the difference of two perfect squares until you take out the 5 and 3x's. And if you do, you get x to the 4th minus 81. And you feel all proud of yourself until you realize, wait a second, that can be broken down as well. Yes, that is Delaney and Devin making those ridiculous noises. <laughs> so this could be x squared minus 9 and x squared plus 9. And you could be now very proud of yourself until you realize, nope, I've got of the three factors, this one is prime and this one is prime but the middle one is not prime. The middle one can be broken down further. Now, I am done. All right, so more factoring. So algebra one, just uglier. So I have my same rules, right? I always look for to pull out the greatest common factor. I always try to see if I have the difference of, if I have two terms, is it the difference of two perfect squares? Uh, maybe pull out a greatest common factor and then I have two perfect squares. Do I have a perfect square trinomial? And of course trinomial means I have three terms or a quadratic, regular quadratic trinomial. There is going to be a number five, but not till later. So here's two to try. And if you want to stop the film and try it on your own, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and say, um, I recognize this right away because, as number three, because I have bookends that are perfect squares. Now, I have to say, I don't know right away that it is indeed a perfect square trinomial, but I check because I have bookends. What makes 36x squared perfect? Why 6x? What makes 25 perfect? 5. If you multiply those two, and then double it, I get 60x, which matches my middle term. That means, yes, I am a perfect square trinomial, which means I can very quickly factor this into 6x, 5 squared, and keep the sign of the middle term plus. If you doubt me, multiply that out. 6x plus 5 times 6x plus 5. Moving over to this one, 
I see right away that I can pull out a 2, and if I'm clever, I can also see that I can pull out a y. That leaves me with x squared minus 5x minus 24. I would get some credit for getting that far, but I need to look at the second factor and realize that it is number 4, a quadratic trinomial with a leading coefficient that is 1. Therefore, hopefully, this factors very quickly. And now I am done. One, two, three. Here's two more. So again, if you want to stop the video and try them, given that I have two terms here, maybe this is the difference of two perfect squares. Certainly isn't the difference of two perfect squares yet, but greatest common factor. I can pull out two x's, and I can pull out, oh no, I can pull out three x's, right? And I can pull out three y's, which leaves me just with x squared minus y squared. x cubed, y cubed is prime. Don't write that as x times x times x and y times y times y. But x squared minus y squared is the difference of two perfect squares. Done. Moving on, here I'm going to factor out a 2. I was thinking at first, oh gee, I can factor out a y as well, but no. Then, this is three terms. It is a trinomial. It is not quadratic, but it is the quadratic form. We did one of these yesterday. For instance, watch this. If I'm just going to change colors and I'm going to say, what if this trinomial was y squared minus 6y plus 9? Hopefully you recognize that as number 3, a perfect square trinomial. y minus 3 squared. Don't forget, of course, your 2. Well, it's not y squared minus 6y. It's y to the fourth minus 6y squared plus 9. So instead of having y times y give me y squared, what if I tried y squared minus 3? And I said to myself, would that work? Because maybe you're not sure. You know how you can always check? Multiply it out. So I thought I recognized a pattern. So I'm going to now say, well, what is 2 times y squared minus 3 times y squared minus 3? And then, sure enough, that's what I started with. Okay, factoring, if you're ever in doubt, just take some guesses and then multiply it back to see if you're right. The more you do, the better your first guesses become. All right, I'm now going to model a technique that we kind of alluded to. We did a little bit in that park packet, right? I demonstrated a factoring using something I call T substitution. You don't have to use this method. Um, it is really just a visual. I often write when I'm starting. I write this stuff out, but then I don't, when I get used to it, training my brain to think in this substitution fashion. I don't need to. So here's this weird expression. Notice there's no equal sign. Again, you're not solving anything. You're just rewriting it. Somebody wants me to factor this. They claim it's not prime. Now, I could certainly just expand x minus 3 squared, combine it with the negative 25, and then I would get a regular quadratic, and I could factor that. And I, would, I must say that in this case, I might just go ahead and do that. But I want to demonstrate another method. What if I just pretend that that x minus 3 is another random letter? I use t. You can use whatever you want. Just don't use x since they already used it. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm saying train your brain to look at that x minus 3 and cover it up and consider it just a simpler version. 
So now, if I ask you to factor t squared minus 25, I bet none of you have a problem with that. That's t minus 5 and t plus 5. No, I think I actually wrote this out. Right? Now notice what I've done. In place of, once I was done factoring, because I factored a simpler version of my original expression, now I'm going to say, okay, now I'm done with the t's. I can put them aside, and I'm going to put back what t was equal to, and then combine what I can. Sometimes you can combine things in there, and sometimes you can't. This time I could certainly combine. x minus 3 minus 5 is x minus 8, and x minus 3 plus 5 is x plus 2. Now, when I multiply this out, right, I am not going to get this version of the original, but I'm going to get an equivalent, right? Because if from the beginning you had expanded and then combined, you would get x squared minus 6x minus 16, and then hopefully you would have factored it that way. So you try. So again, I'm going to, when I look at this, I saw two, let's see, one term and a whole other term. And then I saw a minus in between. So I thought, there's nothing to pull out, no greatest common factor. Could this be my difference of two perfect squares? I just have to do some rewriting to make it match. So I said, let that x minus 1 be t. So I said, what if this is y to the 6th minus, and remember I renamed x minus 1, I renamed it as t. Now, I think this is the difference of two perfect squares. Certainly, if it is the difference of two perfect squares, right, I'm going to have a plus minus, and t squared can be factored like t and t. How can y to the 6th be factored such that it is the difference of two perfect squares? Right, so that I, in other words, what makes y to the 6th the perfect square? Right? Almost done, because you didn't begin with a t, so you have to replace that and then see if you can combine anything. So, y cubed plus t, which is x minus 1, and then y cubed minus t, which is x minus 1. And I feel very happy with myself until I get this back and I have a minus 1 on it. Because I did a lot of good work here. Yay, yay, yay. And then what happened here? What did I do? This is y cubed minus t. Yeah. T. So this is y cubed plus x minus 1, and y cubed minus x plus 1. Now my minus 1 goes away, and I am happy and get full credit. And there is nothing in here that can be combined. There are no like terms. All right, that fifth factoring technique that I mentioned before, factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping, some of you have seen before, and we did a little bit of this, and again, in that park packet. I don't think of factoring by grouping right away. I certainly scan a lot of other things through my head first. I think about greatest common factors, difference of two perfect squares, perfect square trinomials, and then when nothing pops out at me or I can't do any fancy rewrites, I think to myself, hey, do I have more than three terms, right? Because difference of two perfect squares certainly needs two terms. And then the other two techniques involve trinomials. So if I've got more than three terms, I need to manipulate myself into something with one or two terms. I'll show you what I mean by that. So there is a problem right here. Here's my first example, example one, for factoring by grouping. No numbers, just a bunch of letters. And I notice that I've got four terms, and I think, oh, A, oh, no, no, A is not, I was thinking maybe I could, there was some common term to everyone, but there's not. But there is a common term to a couple, and that's why I have the associative property written down. If you associate 
four terms into a group of two and two, and it also happens that each group has its own common factor, you can make two greatest common factor problems. So I used the associative property, I grouped like terms, then I had to check very carefully. Please make sure you use the associative property legally. Because you have a plus, you've got no worries about the associative property. You can use the associative property of addition. You need to be very, very careful when you're trying to associate with subtraction, and I'll do an example like that next. Now, pull out the common term to each group. So notice that A was common in this group, so I pulled it out front. B was common in the second group, so I pulled it out front. And lo and behold, what happened when I was done was that each group had a common factor now. Right? Do you see that? The green is now common. That's what I mean by matching groups. If I didn't have matching groups, it doesn't mean factoring by grouping will, won't work. It just it means maybe the way I associated it worked, didn't work, and I need to go try something again. So if I don't have matching groups, tr you know, scratch out your work and try again. If you do have a matching group, to me, I then default back to T substitution. I assign that group a name. I let T equal my green group. And then I have AT plus BT. Guess what I'm going to do with that T? You got it. Factor it out. You, of course, do not have to do it this way if you get the same answer as me. Doing it, you know, without writing as much thing, without as much down, that's fine. Factor the T out front. And then, of course, resubstitute. Since you didn't have T to begin with, you can't finish with T. And again, if you doubt, distribute, 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 distribute. So, what if I have the same problem, but group a different way? So notice that this time, instead of grouping by having an A in, col in common, I grouped the two terms that had X's in, column, in common, and then the two terms that had Y's in column, in, in column, in common. So, no problem with my first grouping. The X is common, and I'm going to pull it out front. But when you use the associative property, you cannot change the value of the original. So let's make this clear. Each term, A to the X, AX is positive, AY is negative, BX is positive, BY is negative. When I use the associative property, I can't change that. Is a to the x still positive? Yes. Is b to the x still positive? Yes. But now you have a minus here. Remember, that's, all, that's just as if you have a minus 1 that you need to distribute here. Which means a y is negative. Oh, cool. It was negative, right? See? It was negative. But look at by. There's a negative 1 times what you've grouped now and made times negative by, which turns this positive. Boo. Wrong. That's using the associative property illegally. Anytime you're using the associative property around a negative, around a minus, you need to be very, very careful. You need to, really, that's, remember, subtraction is really addition of the opposite, right? So, dagger if you don't see that. Here is the correct version. And then once I have the correct version, I can just keep going. Right? And then everything is going to turn out the same as it did before. I promise. Right? But again, this was the key step. Right? No, no. Notice that AX was positive, still positive. BX was positive, still positive. Distributing this negative through the group means that AY is negative and was negative. Distributing this negative here turns BY negative, but BY was negative to begin with. 
And again, once you're done there, again, you're pulling out the X from this group, the Y from this group. I renamed A plus B as T, factored the T out front, and then replaced T with A plus B. As you can see, I get the same answer I did before. So, again, if you want to turn off the video and try this yourself, please feel free. I'm going to do this incorrectly, that way, right? That's not going to work. But if I say 4x plus 4y oops, minus x cubed, because that means x cubed is negative as it was, but I need to make sure that this is negative. Or you can think of this as factoring out a negative, right? So, now I will pull out the 4, and I will pull out an x squared. And at this step, I need to say to myself, self, do I have a matching group? I do, right? In between my term, for each term, right, this one term two terms. Each one has a matching group or a matching factor. I'm going to name that t, so I'm going to have 4t minus x squared t. Factor the t out front and feel very proud of myself until once again I get a minus 1. Oh, that means I just forgot to replace the t, right? No. 4 minus x squared is not prime. Now, I'm done and full credit. Yay. Next. Oh, I forgot I wanted to put this right here. There's the one, there's the scroll with all my factoring thoughts, including number five. Right? And again, you might have to use any combination of these. And you might not know what you have when you first go into a problem. You just got to try stuff, right? And again, the more practice you have, the better your first guesses are. All right, so let me, let's look at this one. And again, turn, pause the video. So if you want to try some stuff on your own. Um, so I said, oh, look, look, I stopped, look at this one. And I said, oh, there's some X's common there. So I can pull an X out of this and get X plus 10. And then I can pull what? Oh, well, that's the difference of two perfect squares, right? Oh. Sniff, tear, sadness, madness. I did, I, there's nothing I did illegally here. I did everything correctly, but do you have any matching groups? Right? You have term plus term. Are there matching groups? No. So it doesn't mean I give up, doesn't mean I walk away, doesn't mean I leave this blank on a test. Don't do that. Just says, okay, you tried something and your first shot didn't work. I still I have four terms, so I'm still thinking that I'm gonna try factoring by grouping. So I said, well, what if I do the, you know, what if I group the x squared with the z squared, and then this? Um, you know, what if I did x squared minus z squared, and did that, uh, plus 10x plus 25? What would I get then? x plus z times x minus z plus, what can I pull out of this, 5? 2x plus, mm. sadness turns to madness. Okay. But you know what? I don't give up. And I said to myself, self, look, just because I'm going to group, oh, my battery's about to die. So let me just real quickly say, <laughs> this one, don't limit yourself to just uh, grouping by two and two. Group this by, th try a three and a one. And as soon as I group this, I recognize that as a perfect square trinomial. That's x plus 5 
quantity squared minus z squared. And then I'm down to a problem that I'd done before where I used t substitution and I called this t squared minus z squared, which is t minus z and t plus z. Of course, putting the t back gives me x plus 5 minus z and x plus 5 whoops, plus z. And of course, if you think this is magic, all you have to do is multiply this back together. If you multiply those two things, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and finally again, 1, 2, 3, a promise, a promise, that's what you'll come up with. So, my battery is about to go, but that's good because this was the last slide. Don't forget that you have lots and lots and lots of homework to do from the beginning slides, from your book work. If you don't have your book with you, I'm sure you guys are the social media generation. I am sure someone has their book, and you can Facebook, Vine, whatever you guys, Snap, Graham, blah, 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 and someone can send you pictures of these pages. Because, again, we don't have school tomorrow, so I'm going to do another video for tomorrow, and then we have to move on when we get back on Monday. See ya!